might be something big. Clearly the water is full of crocodiles. This is exactly where the crocs will be. This time, I'm facing former Royal Marine Aldo Kane in the croc-infested mangrove swamps of Borneo. Ed Stafford, you invited me to take you on head-to-head. -head. That's a decision you're going to regret. Aldo's a former Royal Marine. He knows his stuff and, um, importantly, for this environment, he's extraordinarily fit. I have a huge amount of respect for the Royal Marines. I, I attempted to become a Royal Marine um, officer when I was younger and didn't get in. To go up against someone like Aldo, it's going to test me massively, yeah. We're going to be dropping Ed and Aldo literally out to sea. And they're going to have to swim ashore. Once they get ashore, they're going to have to negotiate mangrove swamps, tributaries full of crocodiles, and then get into the jungle proper. Once they get in there, they're going to head north. Then they're looking for an observation tower. Check. That's where I'll be meeting them. Come on, let's go. Let's go. The bottom isn't solid at all. It's just mud. So right down here on the front, you have the red mangrove that has the very long sort of root systems that reach down and into the mud. Getting stuck in that mud is going to be incredibly unnerving. I think very, very quickly they're going to realise just what a hell they're in. What we're walking over now is this sort of wall of thick, tangled mangrove roots that I've got to get over. Moving fast over this ground is possible, but I'm taking quite a lot of risks at the moment in terms of slips and falls. But I just want to put some distance between me and Aldo. I need to try and knock this tree down and I can climb over. It's only about 20 feet across. What I want to do is put a notch in this side in the direction that I want it to fall in. But mangroves are bloody solid. Oh my. Yeah, no, 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 the wrong way. There's a lot of wasted energy and a lot of wasted time. And we've still got to get across the other side. This is a snail looking thing over here. And this could be my first meal. What I do know is that because this is salt water, I can, I can risk eating it raw. There's a lot less harmful things in marine animals than there are in river animals. And as disgusting as this looks, this is meat. Now, anything that I can get down me is a win. It smells like mangrove swamp. I've got to take every opportunity to eat as much as I can. This is deep. This is classic croc snatching territory here. Is it worth taking a risk? I'm gonna have to use some of these vines. All right. Nothing like the motivation of having crocs in the water to make you get out fairly quickly. But I have learned maybe not use dead trees for crossing croc infested water. The threat of the rising tide, I've got no option but to um, stop. But I don't actually think that's a bad thing. I think I, I do need to take the time over the last couple of hours of the day to consolidate. My idea is that if I can tension the vines between three trees in a triangle, 
And if they're taut enough, very simply, I can make a platform between them. What I'm hoping to do is to windlass. I'm creating a tensile force tight enough to hold my weight and yet not too tight to snap the vines. I'm relying on this to get me up and out of the threat of crocodiles. <laughs> I don't have a huge amount of time. The sun's getting low in the sky. Albeit I'm not making any more of a shelter than just a platform to lie on. As far as skills and drills go, Ed's done a shed load more survival stuff than I have. And I've done a lot more jungle schlepping than Ed, potentially. I don't think any of that matters here. I think the mangrove is a complete leveller. Thankfully, I'm fairly short as well, so I only need a few pulls. I'm tired now. I am feeling somewhat vulnerable right now. My back is less than an arm's distance away from the water. If a crocodile was to see me as an opportunity, Nipa palms, they're the only palms that can grow in brackish, salty water. More importantly, that's almost the end of the mangroves. I just need to find a way of getting across now. Everything just takes so much time to come up with ideas and constantly problem solving, and it's, it's tiring. But I'm not giving it up that easily. If I can use a knuckle of this super hard mangrove root. I mean, you can see how thin it is and how strong it is. If I can tie that onto some vines whoosh, as far over as I can and then just pull it back. So it goes from there across. This is going to be perfect as a grappling hook. Tie a bit of rattan around the middle of that, get that wedged over somewhere. All right, plating. This is the most boring part about this challenge. That's basically all it is. One. Two. Three. Get in! Yes! Coming for you, Stafford. Don't break now, don't break now. Ah. Come on, last bit, don't break. Come on. Yes! It worked, it worked. Then I'm now into the jungle and that's the environment that I know best. So long mangroves. That there is a leech. He's already started sucking quite a lot. I'm debating in my head whether I can uh, reuse the blood that he's taken out of me. If it looks like a worm and it wiggles, therefore I think that will be good bait. I'm just going to make myself some fishing equipment. If it is a race to the finish line, it's going to be the man with the most energy that wins, isn't it? Essentially, it's a fishing rod that I can walk away from. Um, it's got a trigger mechanism. If a fish takes the bait, the arm will spring up and... Um, Stupidly, I was standing over it when I set it and the trigger mechanism set off and it, it just lashed me straight across the eye. I think I was quite lucky there, to be honest. If all goes well, tonight I'm going to have fish for supper. <laughs> Happy days. Catfish have got really, uh, really big spikes on the side. You can just see the... And, uh, and I just need to be careful because he's still alive. What's up, uh... <laughs> if he's fishing, but that means he's more than likely got fire. And now I haven't had a fire yet, so I might see if I can get closer and try to actually steal some of that fire.
<laughs> and I'm eating roasted fish. <laughs> stripped to the bone, quite literally, stripped to the bone. Right, that's me. I am tired. I'm going to tuck myself up by the fire. Hopefully, I have a good night's sleep, and tomorrow I'm going to smash it. Coming down. Swatch yourself. Knee bone pat. Inside there is a part of pan. This is going to make me stronger. Oh, if you peel that open, these fibers is the heart of palm. It's soft, it's sweet. It's carbs, there's water in here. I know Ed, and I know how competitive he is. Now he's gonna be worried now. We should be worried now. I can see my shadow on my right hand side, which is right. I'm still heading north. <laughs> Looks like the ridge line that I've been aiming for. There's a gully in my direction of travel, but I just want to contour around and make sure that I don't lose any height unnecessarily. My aim is not to lose any altitude, because coming up these hills is a beast. Down and up, down and up. Not following the ridge line. It's hard work, but it gets you some height. Two ridge lines, go either way. It's just instinct, Dad, isn't it? Instinct, go right. Oh. Ah. Ah. My legs are cramping. I can see the watchtower straight through there. Yes, look! There is the tower! Ha-ha! <laughs> ah. Hey, congratulations. Ah. Well then, best man won. Of course I wanted to win, of course I wanted to um, be the first man out, but um, if there's one person, potentially, that I wouldn't mind losing against, it's Aldo. Ah, ay, ay, ay. The risk in inviting Aldo to be a competitor in this series was that I knew how strong he was, but I'm glad that I did. He was faster, I was slower. He put me through my paces, and he brought the best out of me. That is genuinely one of the hardest things I've ever done. Genuinely. Hey, we'll have a rematch. I hope not. <laughs>